Welcome everyone, today we have another build guide for Diablo 4, and today we'll be looking at the Sorcerer. Now in this video, we'll be looking at the Infernal Fire Mage or the Burning Mage for the Sorcerer. And in this build, we'll be looking at multiple sources of burn, which will be giving us a tremendous boost in terms of damage for each instance of burn. We'll also be looking into different enchantment, which will be giving us a massive boost in terms of damage with summoning meteoroids for free and also summoning hydras for free. We'll look into some of the other options for the enchantment for this build. And similar to most of the videos, what we'll do is we'll go through a summary of the skills, then we'll go through the level 50 skill tree of the sources theoretically, and also we'll go through the codex for the sources. Finally, we'll go through the level 28 or level 25 build for the Sorcerer for the beta. So coming over to our summary notes over here. Before we dive into the skill choices, what we want to do is we want to quickly have a look at this particular build in terms of source of burn. And this we can come back to later. Now there is one question I'm not sure of because some of the skill passes mentions that for each sources of burn, you will deal additional damage. And here you can summon multiple of Hydra and also multiple Meteorite, both with a passive and also with the enchantment. So we'll talk about this in the skill tree as well. And of course, it's best that we go through the skills first, then come back to the enchantment and you see the reasons behind it and also the passives and also the directions. So as for the choice of skill, for the basic skill, we go with Firebolt. I don't know. I don't know what happened here. So for the basic skill, we'll go with Firebolt. And after that, we'll go with Incinerate. Both of those will apply burn and also deal increased burn damage. And also for the defensive skills, we have two choices. Both Flame Shield and also Teleport is very interesting. We'll talk about those two as well. And for the conjuration, we'll go with Hydro, which give us more damage and also more burning. As for the Mastery, we'll go with Meteorite. This is going to be the cornerstone of the build. Both applies multiple burn and also it summons free Meteorite when enemies are burned. And this is going to be very interesting against a lot of enemies. In terms of the ultimate skill, we'll go with Inferno. This is ideally the burn setup for the Fire Mage. And for the Capstone, we'll go with Euros Ferocity. This is ultimately to give us more burning damage and also more fire damage. So coming over to our skill tree for the level 50 Sorcerer and also with 15 Reno. Now we'll be going with level 1 Firebolt simply for the burning and also for its special effects, which allows Firebolt to pierce through burning enemies and also Critical Strike will increase the burning damage enemy takes and this will be essential. So we do want critical chances, especially for this build, if possible, because when we crit, we'll increase the burning damage as well. As for the core skill, Incinerate, we'll be going for level 5 Incinerate, together with Enchanting Incinerate, and which, you know, make us more durable, and also we go with destructi Destructive Incinerate, because this will allow us to have more sorts of burn for the enemies around us, if enemies do get close. Now the choices for the fire build here, we have two options. We could have went with Fireball, or we could go with Incinerate. One of the reasons I'm going with Incinerate is that Fireball have a little difficulty to burn enemies. I know we have already lots of sorts of burn, but the more burn it is, the better it is. Also, there is a few of the Codex that provide more benefits for Incinerate. For example, for the aspect of conflagration, this allows us to increase incinerate damage by 20%. And if we're casting incinerate, likely we'll be standing still. So the aspect of inner calm can give us 3 to 30% increased damage because we're standing still. And you know, together with the source of burn, which gives us more damage, I decided to go with the incinerate over here. And this will also, you know, constantly burn enemies, which will also increase our damage as we keep burning enemies up to 71%. Now, some of the passives in this particular trait is also quite interesting. Devastation will increase our damage to healthy enemies by 8%, but ideally we want the elemental dominance. So this means our damage over time increases over 3 seconds and up to 24%. So if you're standing still casting Incinerate, you're actually gaining more damage as you cast Incinerate, which is quite interesting. And this is pretty nice for the core skill. Now, as for the defense section of the skills, we can go with a flame shield. This, of course, gives us a bit more durability, and also this gives us the protectiveness of immune. And on top of that, this also burns enemies. So I did go with flame shield makes enemy vulnerable, but we can also extend the duration of burning onto enemies. So having a flame shield is like a get out of jail free card. You are immune while this is casting, and this means for the two seconds, you won't take any damage from enemies. The cooldown, of course, is 20 seconds, but if you use this wisely, you can dodge a lot of damage. Now you can see that we also perked into teleport. I only went with one point in teleport and also one point in enhanced teleport. This is more like an escape skill, and teleport is very versatile. 
One of the good things about having teleport is that we have the choice of putting that into the enchantment effect, which allows us to swap evade for teleport, which is a much better escape with a damage reduction. Now, of course, we know that it is likely we can change the enchantment spells during combat. Maybe sometimes you can use the enchantment for higher damage. Other times, if you need the escape, you can swap teleport in. So this is quite flexible for one or two points over here. Now here we have a very interesting talent, and this one is Glass Cannon. I'm sure you guys heard of all this, and you know, most of the majors build they have this. So increase damage by 18% and will take 9% more damage for this particular passive. So coming over to Conjunction. Over here we'll be going with level 5 Hydra. Hydra itself is dealing 5 damage, and Hydra also will be you know, attacking with 3 hats. With upgrade we'll gain 4 seconds of additional of Hydra, and also I went with summon Hydra that burns enemies. Now you can go with invoke Hydra which increases attack speed, but this needs a critical strike. So ideally we want to burn enemies as much as we can, so we also have you know, sources of increased burn damage. So now one interesting part about the Hydra is that if you went with a Hydra enchant effect, which is going to be very powerful for our build, is that when we kill a burning enemy, we'll spawn another Hydra. What that means is, most of the enemies will be constantly burned with multiple sources. The moment you kill them, you get one corpse into Hydra, and this means you can be summoning multiple Hydras with a pack of enemies. And this is going to be one of the core choices once we look into enchantment. Now, because we have taken Glass Cannon in the previous section, some of the defensive passes we can take is going one point into alignment of elements and then three points into protection. This means we if we use a cooldown grants us 30% of the maximum life as barrier for five seconds. This could be very interesting because there will be skills with cooldown. You know, defensive skill, offensive skill, they all have cooldowns. And this can constantly provide us with a shield and a barrier to, you know, kind of reduce income damage to the health. Now over here we also have some additional source of passive damage, so while Hydra is activated, we deal overall with 6% increased damage. This is optional because it only gains 2% each time you perk this, so if you have spare points, you can go into it. But if you don't have spare points, you know, it's 2% damage, you can go with something else as well for this one. Now coming over to the mastery section for the sorcerer, this is where the interesting part begins. So one of our core skills is going to be Meteorite. Meteorite will be dealing damage to enemies, with a pretty nice 40% lucky hit chance, and this will also be burning enemies for 3 seconds. The interesting part is, if you take this spell for the enchantment, that means you'll be having a 3% chance of casting a Meteorite onto enemies when they are burning. We have multiple sources, so if you're coming back here, you can see we have at least 6 or 7 sources of burning constantly. That means we can be burning enemies non-stop, and with each enemy, there's 3% chance every second. With a pack of enemies, you almost land a meteor every 3 or 2 seconds. And together with the enchanted meteor, we'll be, you know, if meteor hits more enemies, there's a chance of getting another meteor. So the whole loop comes back that you'll be spawning multiple meteors, and then chances of more meteors when they're burned, chances of more meteors when there's more enemies. So when you group a pack of enemies, you'll kill them maybe in 1 or 2 seconds with like 10 bazillion meteorites. And over here, we also went with a passive that meteor falls 35% faster and costs 6 less mana which is not bad. So this is going to be quite interesting. This is going to be the cornerstone of the build, and this is going to be ideally the highest source of damage, and this is going to be very visually you know, nice when you see the meteorites. Now because we're going with a lot of flame spells, the Inner Mastery section for the passives will go with Inner Flames, which deals us more fire damage if we haven't taken damage. Ideally, if you do have the barrier in the previous section, so in the previous section you gain 30% of your maximum life for the barrier. If you're constantly having some barriers, you can try to reduce the damage taken, and if you keep your distance. And over here we have Devouring Flames. So our Pyromancing skills will increase 3% direct damage for each source of burning to enemies. And this is going to be one of the core sources of damage for us as a damage boost. Because we mentioned earlier we have multiple sources of burn, and this means we can easily get close to 20 or even 30% of bonus damage just with 3 points over here. And finally, Soul Flame will give us additional chance of critical strike, because we want critical strike for additional effects for spells, and also critical strike means more damage. So we can go with this spell because we'll be grouping a lot of enemies together, and more of my modern spells will be meteorite to deal the damage. Now coming over to the ultimate section of the spell. The Inferno is likely going to be the best choice for the Fire Elemental build, and we'll be going with its passive as well. So Inferno will deal burning damage to the area, enemies in the area, and also, you know, this is pretty nice, 
plus with the Inferno also immortalizes enemies, which give us, you know, keep them in their place. And also we'll be constantly lowering cooldowns because we're constantly burning enemies. And when a burning enemy dies, Inferno's cooldown will get reduced. Because we're constantly burning enemies, Inferno with a 40 second, 45 second cooldown could be like 40 seconds or even 30 seconds cooldown because we keep killing enemies. So you can cast Inferno quite frequently and expect the cooldown to go faster and go down faster. Now some of the notable passives over here will be in the fire section. So one point into Immortalate Flame to reduce enemies damage dealt, you can go with more points in this as well. And we'll be going with three points to fire surge. So killing burning enemies grant us an increased attack speed. And finally, Pyromania means that we have increased critical strike damage per burning enemy up to 50%. And this means we can easily get to 30 or even 40% increased critical strike damage. And this again comes back that we want critical chance and this will give us high damage. Now there are two choices for the capstone of the fire mage. One of the capstones we can go is warp, which means that we'll be getting more mana or more energy as we burn enemies. This is quite nice. If you find yourself short of you know, energy, this is, can be very powerful. On the other hand, you can be dealing more damage with burning enemies and also with your fire skills. So when enemies HP is above 50%, you'll deal more burn damage. When enemies HP is below 25%, your fire damage will deal more damage. So this is nice for the damage, or you can go with resource. So this will be optional. Once we test out the build, if we lack the energy, we can go with worth. But if we have the energy, we go with more damage. So coming back to our notes over here, you can see that I have highlighted a few of the possible enchantment options for our build. Because we know we can at least get two enchantment or maybe even three. Currently we know we can get two enchantments, one at level 15 and one at level 30. And the two enchantment choices for highest damage will be Meteorite and also Hydra for me. Both have chances of summoning additional you know, things when you're burning enemies. And this is the cornerstone of the build. Now we can also take the utility of teleport to swap out of one of the skills. And this means that, you know, if we are having trouble and trying to survive, we can take out Hydra or Meteorite to swap in teleport just for the, you know, additional skill and also changing evade into teleport. There is also a few other choices I thought of. So incinerate and also Firebolt both give us another chance of an incinerated being when we deal direct damage and also Firebolt will give us another source of burn. So 100% chance to burn when we deal direct damage to enemies is not bad. Now, if you guys want to mix up your own source of enchantment for the skills for the specialization of the mage, I'll provide you guys with the source of the site on um, GG, where you can see the choices of the skills you can put into your slots for different sources. You can be lowering cooldowns, getting more energies, or, you know, freezing enemies or having more defensive capacities by picking some of those skills. Now coming over to the Codex Power, so we'll briefly talk about some of the highlights for the mage. Usually I always go with Disobedience and also Might, so this is just because they're quite nice for the defensive spells for most of the classes. Now as for the mage, I'm also going with Edge Master and also the Expectant, so this just increases your core source of damage with resource spending, and also your basic spell will increase your core skill. Now, because we're standing still with Incinerate, so I decided to consider to go with Aspect of Inner Calm, and this can build up Inner Calm, uh, this can build up uh, damage standing still even further. So the longer you cast Incinerate, you'll be dealing up to 30% damage, and also plus the passive over here to deal another 24% damage for casting the spell continuously. And also there's more increased damage because you're casting the spell by the passive of the spell. Now we mentioned earlier the aspect of conflagration, which gave us channeling incinerate to give us more burn damage, which also come back to that we want to cast incinerate to continuously burn enemies to trigger more, you know, hydra and also meteorite and also to deal more damage. We can always go with the elementalist aspects, which means core and also master skills cast at above 100 mana gain a 20% increased critical strike chance. Ideally, you want to start the spell of Meteorite if you have above 100 mana. Now, there may be items and other skills that increase mana of the mage. And this can be that we might be having a full mana and we can cast a core spell. And this can provide us with 24% more damage with Edge Master and because we're full of resource. And this also means that we can gain the increased critical strike chance. And because when we critical strike, we get additional, you know, good, good old passives and more damage and also other stuff that comes with the critical chance damage. So this is kind of nice if you remember to cast your strongest spell when you have the highest mana. As for the resource section of the codex, we'll be going with incendiary, incendiary, 
incendiarating aspects, which means killing burning enemies, which all that means is a burn, we get up to 15% mana cost reduction, which is pretty nice. And we can go with Prodigy's aspects, that means uh, if we cast ultimate skills, we gain 80 mana. And if you guys remember, we'll constantly be burning enemies. And when burn enemies are killed, we get cooldowns reduction for, to Inferno. And this means we can cast more ultimate, which is quite powerful, because the lower cooldown is going to mean that, you know, we deal more damage. As for the utility section of the Codex, we could go with aspects of sh Shred Flesh. So while dealing direct fire damage, enemies are immobilized for 2 seconds every 5 times. Now we do have a few sorts of direct fire damage as well, you know, including Hydra, including the Meteorite. And if we, you know, if those summons are locked, enemies can be constantly immobilized. And finally for mobility, we go with aspect of bonding contact. So this means that after teleporting, you can gain movement speed. Now you could say that you can go with a wind striker aspects for the 8% movement speed when you crit. But you know, if you're getting teleport a lot, if you're using teleport quite a bit, this is not bad. Now we can also go with something like the flame workers aspects, but we're not going with fire wars, so we can't really make use of that. And everything else, they're pretty much pretty standard. I don't think we need that. It is also optional to go with this or not. If you don't have enough codex, you don't have to go with this as well. And finally, let's briefly have a look at some of the potentials for the open beta for level 25 up to level 28 with three renal points from the first section of the map. So we go with one point in Firebolt, and similarly we go with five points in Incinerate. This still will be the core source of the spell of damage and then also burn. And we go with one point into Flame Shield. We probably won't go with Teleport over here, but we will take the Glass Cannon for more damage. Over here, we go with one level in Hydra, just because we want to have active spell, and also Hydra can be burning enemies. And we'll be going with one point in Meteorite. Now, I'm a little unsure if I wanted more passives here, or want more points in Meteorite. So this is what I'm not sure of, because I might want more damage. Because perking this way, we get Inferno at level 28. But there's another choice. So if I don't go with increased damage passives, I can go with higher points into Meteorite. Or I can also go with the cooldown reduction, which could be very massive for the Inferno. So you can see that we have a few choices, but our points are limited at level 28 or level 25. So the only way you get to level 28 for the skill points, if you get all three of the random points for the open beta in the first section of the map. And this will give you three skill points to get to 28. So it is optional to go with a few higher level of Meteorite. And of course you can take away Glass Cannon. Let's say if we take away Glass Cannon, we have a bit more skill points, we could do this way. So this will take us to 27. So it is optional if you want to go with more skills or more passives. It really depends on how we go in open beta. And we'll be testing this out once this is available in about a week time. So quite excited for the mage. Now before you go, and if you guys didn't know, we have a new YouTube channel. So I just started a YouTube channel with my girlfriend yesterday, and you can see this is only 12 hours old, this YouTube channel. And if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe and check out the behind the scenes and also fun clips and also more stories about us. And then you get to know me a little more personally, instead of just reading the news and also the games, right? So I want to share a little bit more with you guys. So make sure you check this channel out if you're interested about Matt and also Uni. She's really funny too, and she's really shy, so I want to give her a surprise and do a shout out for the new channel to get some subscribers. <laughs> Thank you guys. I'll see you guys next time.